Uh, the Carebright community uh, was a pipe dream about eight years ago and it came from uh, our care managers who were working in the community with people living with dementia. Uh, and they could see that in, in some situations people were very, living very well at home but they, they didn't have a strong support system. Um, and as a result, they, th their next step would be to move into a nursing home. And nursing homes are wonderful and they do an amazing job, but they're not for everybody. So we were thinking outside the box and thinking, what if we could provide a, a home away from home with a, a household structure? This is an independent living. People come here to, to live independently, flourish their life, make friends, live happily, be part of the community and um, do what they want to do, just be normal. There's, there won't be anybody kind of um, questioning them or, or trying to correct them. You just go along and um, be in their comfort zone. I suppose the reason that we, we want people to come here during their, um, I mean, while they are in their early to middle stages, we want people to come here, leave, um, leave like they, they, are, they are living at home and meet friends, go out with your friends and have a bit of fun with your friends. And as you progress and your dementia, still have that friendship, still have that bond and just watch out your neighbor, look out for your friend. If there's something wrong with her, why, why is she? Not? And that is what we want so that they, they will still have that bond with their neighbor or friend. So we came up with this idea uh, eight years ago um, and uh, August, uh, almost two years ago now, we started um, the, the project here in Brough. This is the first of its kind in Ireland. It's a purpose-built community and we are now taking admissions uh, and people can contact us very easily by our, our direct line, which is 061 602 700 or you can go to our website, carebright.ie, or email uh, Nisha Joy, who's the person in charge, at enjoy at carebright.ie. Ruff is a long-standing tradition of culture, from the arts, to the written word, to music, to dance, and it's about honouring that culture every year. We have a summer festival traditionally for the last number of decades, um, this year we're coinciding it with Bloomsday. Bloomsday falls on a Saturday this year, so the idea was build your summer festival around Bloomsday this year. So we've lots of different events throughout the weekend, not all related just to Bloomsday. That's our anchor tenant, for want of a better word. But there'll be something for young and old throughout the weekend. People lead very, very busy lives in this day and age. They're going 100 miles an hour, coming and going to work. It's about getting back to basics, it's about doing the simple things. It's about slowing down maybe for a minute and, and taking in the beautiful weather and scenery and, and so forth and, and, and enjoying it with their, their family and with their neighbours and getting back to basics basically. What Mulligan came from the stair then, bearing a bowl of lava or which a mirror? Bloomsday in Brough is a celebration in Grange every year. This is the 10th year and the reason we have it in Brough is because of the friendship between James Joyce and George Clancy, an ex-mayor of Limerick who was assassinated by the Black and Tans in 1922, but he was a very, very good friend of James Joyce. Um, he was his best friend at, at UCD. And we celebrate in very much the traditional Bloomsday way. Uh, we, we have a Joycean breakfast, we have readings, music, and we have enactments and, and, and so on. And uh, this year, as a difference, we're, as well as the breakfast in the old Church of Ireland, we're recreating a Triestine uh, cafe atmosphere in, in another wonderful venue and, and people should be excited and come to that. Quite often we're asked early on in the year, are you definitely having Bloomers Day this year? And it's great to see the town. One of the years we closed the main street, we had horse and, and carriage going down the street and, and many people in Brough um, spend a lot of time getting their costume ready and to see people strolling down the town in 1904 outfits is wonderful. And in the last couple of years, Vicky has run a, a workshop helping people to get their hats ready and so on. And it's good this year that it's been integrated as part of a, a summer festival. Um, Brough is a town, a place of importance, full of history. People have lived around Lock for approximately 6,000 years. 
and it's one of the few sites in Ireland where there's evidence of continuous habitation. So people arrived here in the Neolithic and they haven't left. The hill behind us is Nakadoon and on that site there's remnants of what, uh, what could be described as a Neolithic village and that's 5,700 years ago. Just on the far side of the lake then, you've got the Stone Circle, Kirkle Lee and Agranchy, which is the largest stone circle in Ireland, and carbon dates got from that in 2012, put it at 2950 BC, just shy of 5000 years old. We've chronoles in the lake from the Iron Age, there's ring forts around the lake. Every age is accounted for in the archaeological records, so from the Neolithic through the Bronze Age, into the Iron Age, into the early Christian period, when the Vikings arrived, up until the arrival of the Normans, it's all here around the lake. So the centre was uh, developed in 1981 and opened and in 2012 a community based group actually took over the running of it. So what the, basically the centre does is it goes through the 6,000 years of history that we have here at the lake. And I guess, and I suppose I'm biased on it, but the fact that it's run by the community and by local people means I think you're getting a much more authentic experience than you'll get in a lot of other places around the county and around the country. You know? Yeah, so I mean, in the centre you have a mixture of uh, replicas and authentic artefacts. Like, so you have a replica of the Locker Shield, which is a Bronze Age shield, which was discovered in 1872 by two brothers, uh, Hazes. They were cutting reeds on the far side of the lake, and they found it. So that original is in the National History Museum. There's five stone axes there from the Neolithic and two bronze axe heads. All well, the bronze axe heads are interesting because the fellow had found them. He found them in 1982 when he was fishing. The line got caught. He reached down to get the line out, and there's these two bronze axes put in the lake. Thought of as a vote of offering. He said, look lads, you have to ring the National Museum obviously, like, so he basically said, I want to keep these axes here. They're like, no, no, no. So he ended up basically him standing at the edge of the lake said, they're going back into the lake, let's lock her and keep them. So we have them, you know what I mean? And they're beautiful, absolutely beautiful, you know. I mean, we're only 15 minutes from Limerick City, you know what I mean? It's, it doesn't feel, to be honest, to me, it doesn't really feel like you're in Limerick when you're here at all, I think, sure. I think it's right through doorstep, I wouldn't choose it. It's, you know, it's an amazing, uh, it's an amazing facility. It's, I mean, numbers are growing, like, I mean, on nice sunny days here, we are getting lots and lots of people here, like, and I wouldn't have noticed as much from a few years ago, like, the numbers are definitely growing in here, like, the tourism is massively growing in Ireland, and I think it's going to become increasingly important, you know? And I think Limerick has the potential to develop its tourism a hell of a lot more than it is at the moment, to be honest.